We continue tonight with this special Christmas New Year's week conversation with one of our faves, Amber Athey at Spectator and also host of the radio show and podcast, Unfit to Print. You recently wrote an article at Spectator about uh, the homelessness issue here in DC. This is gonna be about DC, but it really could be repeated in pretty much every urban center in this country uh, run exclusively by Democrats like DC is. They all have the same problems. And finally, after years and years and years of people living on the streets and defecating on the streets and urinating the streets, in some cases fornicating on the streets. It's like we've forgotten all the basic rules of Western civilization. Finally, it appears the D.C. government is saying, okay, maybe we should do something about the homeless problem. Yes, thank God. Yeah. Uh, the National Park Service is going to start enforcing its... Oh, wait, it's the National Park it's Service. It's not actually So it's the not the D.C. Council. No, it's actually yeah. federal. People so. need to understand here right. in Washington, there are all these overlapping jurisdictions. Right, um, but, but I will say the D.C. government is assisting by providing social services. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is the National Park Service is going over all of its land, mm -hmm. which is basically every park in D.C., yeah. and they are going in and clearing out the tent cities by using their no camping policy. And they're, they say that they're going to have all of the encampments cleared by the end of 2023, so the end of next year. I don't know why it's going to take so long. Twelve months to do this? Right. My suspicion is that they're trying not to do this in the winter because they're already getting protests and backlash from left-wing activists who are complaining that they are displacing homeless people during hypothermia season. Wait, but, but they're living outside. Right. So they're, I know. Their claim is that they have their encampments set up in a way where they know that they're protected from the elements and you're going to send them to a different street corner and they're not going to have the same set up or blah, blah, blah. But what the National Park Service is doing is they're going in with, as I said, members of the D.C. government social services to offer these people either temporary or long-term shelter and housing. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get them into treatment programs for mental illness and drug addiction. So they are trying to address the root causes of why these people are homeless. The yeah. problem is, if you're homeless and you're addicted to drugs, you don't want to go to a shelter because they don't allow them. Right. So you have to want to get help. That's the key. It right. needs to, it's like, okay, but what's wrong with that's exactly what our government should be doing we just say okay we don't want you living on the streets for a lot of reasons and it's against the law but we understand you may have a problem so if you have an addiction problem here's a shelter for you but you got to get clean if you have mental health issues then fine we're going to give you treat you for mental health issues but you got to get clean you got to get straight um and if you don't have any of those issues then what the hell are you doing here right. you should be able to to, to self-sustain so what's wrong with that there's got to be some conditions put on a free bed and a roof over your head exactly i don't understand what's wrong with it either and you know we used to have drug courts for example where mm. if you got picked up for whatever reason you could have a drastically reduced sentence or serve it in a drug treatment center yeah. if you agreed to get help. But you got to get clean. Exactly. And that's how we lift up the, you know, the broken members of our society. Yeah. Um, and the reality is, is that these homeless encampments are not just an eyesore, but they are a problem for sanitation and the safety of the other citizens who yeah. live in D.C. The National Park Service told me that they have received many um, police phone calls um, or police reports about crime relating to just one of the encampments at Fort Reno Park that was cleared out a yeah. couple of weeks ago. Um, so these are not just people bumbling along living Ooh, out of it's tents. It's breeding grounds for, for criminal activity, absolutely. In Anyone fact, who's been outside of Union Station where the Columbus Circle encampment used to be, they actually cleared mm -hmm. that one recently too. Yeah, they cleared it out in time for Biden, Biden to speech. give a speech yes. down there. Yeah. But you know that these people would harass you, they would chase you down, they mm -hmm. would try to get money off of you panhandling, and it's just not a pleasant experience, especially as a young woman. I don't want to walk past any of these tent cities because Frank, the people who live there are unpredictable. Right. And you never want to be around unpredictable people. That's a recipe for disaster. Right. And, and, and they're already breaking the law. So they're already fine with criminal behavior of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, and in California, in these encampments, you've got, because uh, it's so institutionalized now, you've got prostitutes and pimps actually turning tricks in those tents yeah. on the sidewalks. It's disgusting. And you talk about being a young woman living in this town. I, mean, I, I was your age. I lived in a major, I lived in New York and then in Los Angeles. And there's something fun about living in a big urban setting and enjoying a big city. That's the time when you can really live in a city and make the most of it. It's got to be kind of depressing for you in this town right now. It is. I used to love D.C. I lived in Georgetown while I went to school there, and then afterwards I did move across the road to Virginia, but I would go 
to into DC for work and yeah. go out with friends and go to try new restaurants. And it was a really fun and exciting time to live here. Everything was clean. It felt pretty safe. And now it just seems like it's a ghost town. Look at you, you're so young campus. and you're already doing back in my I day. Know. I know, <laughs> I'm like the get off my lawn old you're person right. already. Yeah. Um, but but it's true. I mean, if you've been to the city recently, it just feels like a different place it's from depressing. what it used to be. It's really This sad. city has still not recovered from, the, everyone will say from COVID. No, it's from the BLM riots. Yeah. I remember uh, that's what was the turning point. The riots, the looting that happened in that downtown corridor from the White House and then a few blocks toward the uh, uh, Capitol Hill. A lot of those restaurants and stores are still boarded up. Yeah, I think probably at least half of the restaurants in D.C. Um, went under during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, tying this back to the homeless issue, but I mean, this is a great example of how far the city has fallen. McPherson Square, I used to work two blocks away from McPherson Square. And mm -hmm. it's a, you know, you know, a beautiful little park and it has a sidewalk down the middle. They would have yoga at, at, you know, after work and there were food trucks that would line up all around the square. Yeah. People would go there and get their lunch and sit down on a blanket and eat lunch in McPherson and Square. And in that neighborhood, you probably saw some other colleagues who were sort of working for competing oh, yeah. websites that you were right. writing for and you had this little <laughs> conservative posse hanging out. It was yeah. fun. And now the entirety of McPherson Square is littered with tents. You can't even um, walk through it anymore. Yeah. And, and the D.C. Council wonders why tourism down in mm. D.C. and why people aren't coming here. And it's because they're not safe. It's not safe. Uh, so what do you do? I mean, what what is the... Well, you're engaged now, so you don't have a nightlife anymore, right? <laughs> not really. <laughs> I drink but, wine at home. <laughs> but you've got a lot of friends who are... And, and all our pals over at Town Hall and all those writers and stuff. What, what, what do they do? I, I, I really do worry because it is a fun thing for young people who are working in a city before they're married, before their parents. They should socialize. They should enjoy nightlife. Well, it seems to me a lot of my friends are moving into Arlington and Alexandria, and that's where we go out now. Mm. We go to Clarendon or- These uh, are all or, Virginia neighborhoods right. that are very close to DC, but not actually part of the city. And filled with young people, they're relatively safer, they're cleaner, and it's just a nicer place to hang out. You don't mm -hmm. feel like you could be randomly attacked at any given point. You're not walking down the street next to used needles and condoms. So it's just a much more pleasant experience and the rent's cheaper. So who wouldn't want that trade off? It does sound like win, 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 win. All mm -hmm. right. Well, as long as everyone's having fun, I just want to make sure you're enjoying <laughs> yourself and we having are. fun because you have to be happy warriors if you're a conservative in this town and in this business. It's funny because Arlington used to be sort of the not cool neighborhood mm. and people in DC used to make fun of me for living there and they would say that it was boring and too far away. They wouldn't come to my place to hang out. I always had to go into DC. And now everyone has finally turned the corner and I was the original Arlingtonian, so I'm actually very cool. Well, that's why you're here. You're a trendsetter, <laughs> Amber Athey. And uh, in fact, you beat everyone to the punch going after Dylan Mulvaney. Oh boy. On social media, Dylan Mulvaney, of course, is this uh, female impersonator who decided, what, 250 days ago that he was a girl. And so he shared it on a daily basis with everybody on social media, creating videos that are, well, frankly, offensive. And now, well, Amber Athey, she's frankly the person who led the charge, pointing the, out, out the fact that he was so offensive to real women. So coming up in a moment, we're gonna give Dylan Mulvaney exactly what he wants. More attention, because when Amber Athey talks about Dylan Mulvaney, people listen. That's coming up next. Keep it here on O'Connor Tonight.